What's up? It's currently 7 o'clock or 7 a.m. Um, we stayed at the Port Vincent Caravan Park last night. It's pretty good. Um, nice and close to the beach. There's two sides. There's one on either side of the road. So plenty of showers and that. Anyway, the main thing is it's my wife's 25th birthday today. Big 2-5, nearly 30 years old. So, I'm up early so I can make her pancakes and give her breakfast in bed like the brown nose I am. I haven't really got much planned because we're moving so much. Like, we were meant to stay at Ardrison, but that didn't work out because all the spots were taken. So now we're down here, so nothing... Lucky I didn't book anything up there, otherwise it would have been ruined. Um... But yeah, basically just going to take her out probably for lunch or dinner, whatever she feels like. Probably put her, she wants to go on a fishing charter, but not around here. So probably put some money towards a fishing charter for her in Broome or something. We both come up with a pretty good point of you can catch pretty much the same fish here as you can in Victoria. So we may as well go somewhere warmer and catch bigger and better fish. So yeah, that is the plan. But happy birthday, Holly. Good morning from a big 25 year old. It's my birthday today and Kev has made some pancakes and a coffee for me. Wait. What more could you ask for? They call me the flip king. Okie dokie. I look a bit different. I've straightened my hair and put some makeup on today because why not? It's my birthday and I felt like it. So we are going to go to Hillocks Drive. That's where we're staying tonight. And we are going to go along the coast to get there. And our plan is really just to stop in each town and see what there is to do and what they have and just have a bit of a look around. It's about a two and a half hour drive without stopping times. Um, so yeah, it gives us sort of the day to explore and see what we can find, hey? Mm. Holly's pub crawling for her birthday. <laughs> Kev wants me to do a pub crawl and have a Bilson's at every single pub, which anyone who knows me knows I love Bilson's, but it's also very expensive. We paid, how much was it for a Jack can? Just in Mount Gambia, uh, it was like nearly fifteen dollars for a jack can. So by the time we get down to Hillocks, I think one, I'll be very pissed, and two, <laughs> out of money. <laughs> Just made up the road to Stansbury, and there's a silo that we spotted in the distance. So we thought we'd try and get to it. It's got a giant blue swimmer crab on it, and dolphins at the top. We just rocked up at Sultana Point Beach. Where I'm eating Sultanas. <laughs> the water is so freaking clear here. A couple of more spinny things. Okay. Because it's my birthday today, I got to choose what we do. And to be honest, there wasn't much to do around this area. However, anyone that knows me knows that I like fishing. I might not catch a lot, but I just really enjoy fishing. So we're at the Marion Jetty. Kev's got a cray pot or like a net. Um, we're still in the area where blue swimmer crabs are well found in this area and the water is super clear. It's a little bit windy, but it's not too bad. So we're gonna walk to the end and see what we can find, hey? Pick up something. The fish must have known it was my birthday. I literally just dropped the line in. I had some pippies on and got myself a brown spotted wrasse. Man, that was windy out there. All right, Kev ended up catching nothing. I wasn't trying though. <laughs> yes, you were, you had the squid jigs in. Yeah, so is everyone else. And you had the net. Um, didn't catch anything. I ended up catching two spotted wrasse. Well, a third one, but Kev doesn't count it because I didn't have it in my hands because it just slipped the hook right at the surface. Um, but yeah. Pretty much nothing, because I'm not a fan of the brown wrasse, so. But that's right, two is better than none. Hey, we've just arrived at Dilba Garanda National Park, or Innes National Park. Uh, we had to pay $13 for a permit to drive in here. How good? Now, we've had to swap drivers, because Ollie can't read a map. I can read a map. That's not what you said to me. I just don't have my glasses on. Oh, 
Oh. So, yeah, if we get lost, that's where we last were, alright? First stop on the map is Stenhouse Bay Jetty. So we'll go check that out. What an anchor. Harold, this be Chinaman's hat. This is Chinaman's hat, Ireland, apparently, according to the map. They're, um, they're doing a pres prescribed burn at the moment, they call it. It's all the way down this whole side here. Okay, next up was the, where are we? Ethel Beach Wreck. Oh, it's bloody windy. Investigator Straight Shipwreck Trail. That's bits of the mothership. It was a trusty old ship back in the day. I think it hit an iceberg or something. Nothing but old rusty metal now. Actually, you gotta be careful where you walk. There's bits of rusty steel everywhere, naturally. Couple sheets of marine ply, I reckon I could have this back on the ocean in no time. Nice little one bedroom house. Nothing fancy, got a garage on the side. Bubbles! Okay. That was the Ethel wreck, and that is the end for us because all the other stops are just lighthouses and campgrounds and we don't want to do all that driving. Just have to come all the way back down through all this to go back to where we need to. So we're going to cut it at the uh, shipwreck and we're going to head back to our camp but we'll stop at Marion Bay at the um, Marion Tavern again and probably have dinner there. Just to celebrate Holly's birthday one more time. We just went through the whole freaking national park and didn't see one bush chook. We get to the tavern and there's one just here drinking from a puddle. On you bud, on you. Alright, excuse the camera jumping in and out of focus, the car's bumping around. Um, but we've just gotten to Hillox Drive um, campground where we're staying tonight. And what a mission and a half to try and find <laughs> our campground. It is a massive, massive camp area just with like these sand roads um, that have like little openings and then the rocks on the openings are painted with the names of the campgrounds. But it's massive and we're trying to find one little campground. So um, we're still driving, still trying to find where we are. The map um, was useful except we were going the other way and you didn't know until the next couple of campsites so you could sort of figure out which way you were heading. Um, so yeah, there's supposedly emus, roos, all that sort of stuff at this campground, so we'll see what we can find. Hey, geez, you guys look good. We've uh, just pulled up, we finally found the spot. So, she's not, not much, but she's honest. Very flat, very flat. It's us for tonight. Good morning. It is actually light now, so we can show you around our campsite. Nothing super special. Just sort of looks like a campsite in the scrub. Um, for anyone interested, Hillix Drive is $34 per night. I believe, I don't know whether that up there is a cabin, let me zoom in, or the toilets. Apparently we're 50 meters away from the toilets, so I feel like that could be the toilets, I don't know. Anyway, beach is literally just like over there. Um, so we'll show you that once we've had a coffee and some brekkie. Tell you what, the Outback Tourer, it's pretty good, I've got to give it to it. Like, Kev was just sitting in bed then talking about how it's so comfy, so spacious, which it is. The only thing that I have to say is when it's really windy, the poles rattle a little bit, but I feel like that's gonna be the case with every rooftop tent. And to be honest, like nothing has ripped down. We've had some pretty, pretty how you going winds over the past couple of days. Um, and yeah, she works a treat. Really easy to set up, really comfy. And yeah, like we were tossing up between the Bush Company one and the Outback Tourer. Bush Company was more expensive um, and it was also really thick. So Kev was worried about the height of his car because he didn't want to add too much to it. Um, 
but yeah so we went with the Outback Tour and yes it is great. So it turns out there's a little path that we can see now that it's daylight from our campsite down to the beach. Also a little cabin or pod that you must be able to book and stay in. Yeah, I think you've seen enough of beaches. I love country towns like this. Just one sign on the road that says stock on road about 200 meters back and then you get up here and there's blokes on motorbikes or quad bikes pushing sheep or cattle up the road. I was trying to eat the tree as it's running past. What do you mean sheep or cattle? They're clearly sheep. Yeah, I know, but like, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. in situations. All right, we were just traveling down to our next spot and the car started making this weird rattle sound. So we thought, uh oh, and we've just pulled over. Kev's just checking it out now. Can't seem to find anything. I've tried revving it. He's listened under the bonnet, under the hood. Can't hear anything. So I think it's all good. I think we're just shitting ourselves because Kev keeps saying these things are known to, like, for the engines to go. So let's hope that it's not that, hey? Just start the point turton for a quick fish. Yeah, I'm going to try and feed a pelican. I'm either going to lose a hand or an arm. Tiny little ray in the water there. Rays everywhere in this joint. You got him, you got a little banjo shark over there, and then another ray right over there. Oh, he's trying to squid jig him. So I'm trying to find more stingrays, and I'm just walking back up. There is a freaking kitten just sleeping on this rock. Okay, the time is currently two o'clock and we are, well, we have just pulled into a town called Belga um, Belgowan, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, apparently really good for whiting, except we just got here and found the jetty is not up. It must have been um, taken down for, I don't know, whatever reason, probably too rugged. Um, but yeah, so we've just sort of stopped in the town. There's nothing really else here. So we had a little bit of a chat yeah, and- sick of looking at beaches. Yeah, Kev's sort of over the coastline. To be honest, like, I don't rate, I'm just gonna come out and say, I don't rate, rate the York Peninsula at all. Like it's the- It's cool, but- I don't even know if it's cool in all honesty. Thing. Like the views are just all the same. That sounds really ungrateful. So please don't take that the wrong way. Like super grateful to be out traveling, but yeah, there's only so many beaches you can sort of look at before they all start to look the same. And there's not really any activities or anything that you can do out here unless you want to spend hundreds of dollars on a fishing charter or dolphin cruise or that sort of thing. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited just to sort of head up to Flinders Ranges and so is Kev. So we're sort of going to, the plan is to head up there a day earlier. So we're going to stay sort of halfway um, towards there tonight and then go to an Aldi nearby tomorrow before we head up to the ranges so that way we get the wednesday and the thursday at the ranges and not the friday saturday sort of time um hopefully it's a little bit quieter and yeah that's the plan for now we are going to stop off in a place called munta bay seems to be quite a big town um and i might see if i can find myself a birthday present or something there we'll see all right we've resorted to bangers because kev's sick of the country music <laughs> Hey, it's starting to hype me up. Are you hyped? Getting there, I'm getting there. Alright, we've just pulled up in Moonta Bay and parked the car and we're going to go for a walk and see what shops we can find. Alright, so successful op shopping. Got some stuff. We spent a total of $19. And we got four or five items, I can't remember, but pretty cheap. It was like $5 a piece. Okay, good morning. We stayed at Crystal Brook Reserve last night. It's like a 24 hour RV um, stopover um, type of campsite. Um, not sure if Kev updated you with that or not. I don't even know if we're focusing, but anyway. Okay, I'm on coffee duty this morning because Kev always makes a coffee, so it's only fair that I have a turn, right? Um, it was pretty noisy last night to be honest, like just over here, we're right next to a train line that was super loud. 
but I still feel like I had a pretty good sleep and to be honest I was up at 5 30 I woke up this morning which I don't normally I've been waking up at like 7 ish um so 5 30 is well was normal for me when I was at home going to the gym but not normal here so I think I'm just really excited because today we are heading to the Flinders Ranges so we haven't been to the Flinders Ranges in probably three years we have been there before it's actually where we got engaged um so yeah it's exciting to go back and see and I just love the wildlife there um and the rocks and all of that sort of stuff like when the sun's setting and rising it's just something else there it's absolutely beautiful so very exciting this morning when I got up early I ran some tint through my eyebrows and they sort of look a bit gray and I have to pluck a bit of them but I just thought I would do that because I was starting to go a little bit light obviously I'm a redhead so my eyebrows are very light um, but yeah not as good as my eyebrow lady normally does so so if you're watching this sorry <laughs> but um, yeah that's right not too bad Look who's finally decided to wake up. Fuck off. Old sunshine over here. <laughs> I'm always up first. Pardon? I'm always up first. Yeah, not today. Coffees are made. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> this is what we have to do to keep clean. Face scrub. Too cold to have a shower. Got this? Be face? Probably. Sec. And Melanie, don't kill us. I know it's head and shoulders, but head and shoulders. Okay, we're almost ready to head off, but before we do, Kev's found some potable water, which is actually really hard to find. Um, not hard to find water, but hard to find water that has signs saying it's potable and you don't really want to run the risk. So we found one and we're going to fill up um, our tank. So we've got a 50 litre tank inside the car and a 20 litre tank outside of the car. So we're going to fill both of those up and our drink bottles as well so that we're good to go for the ranges. Okay, so we're just passing through a town called Wirraburra. 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 And there is silo art here, which we I actually purchased the silo art trail books ages ago, but for some reason they will not re-download on my phone. So I haven't really been able to look at them. So originally I'd written down all of the silo, lo, uh, silo locations around all of Australia, but some of them are too far out and we're not going silo hunting. We're just sort of looking for them if we're near them. Um, and yeah, we found one, so we're going to show you. She looks flash. All right, that was pretty cool. Um, now, before we get up to the Flinders Ranges, I have just seen on Google Maps, I've also heard of it before, but I, I don't know if I've actually written it down. Um, there is Mount Remarkable, which I've heard is pretty remarkable. And in Mount Remarkable, there is a place called Alligator Gorge, which looks really cool. Um, there's also a lookout called Alley Lookout. So we're gonna have a look at those on the way as well. All right, you can see the mountain in the distance. We're just heading towards Melrose now. We're gonna fuel up and then we'll head to the mountain. Okay, for those wondering, we just filled up. We um, filled up a total of 105 litres. I'm pretty sure I hold 120 or 130. The fuel light wasn't on yet, but we got 700 Ks to that. So I'm pretty happy with that, considering we're on 35s and been giving it a bit of herb everywhere so yeah all right we just pulled up at alligator gorge in mount remarkable and uh, we're currently walking down the one kilometer um return oh it's two kilometer return hike just to get to the gorge but yeah there's just something about our steps that we love so much every day we've been doing them lately This giant's pretty sick. It's hard for you guys to probably see because of all the shadows. It's so tall. Alright, the rules are no flying drones in here, which I was sort of a bit bummed about before we came down, but to be honest, it would be really hard to fly a drone. There's fallen trees just everywhere. And the views that you'd want to get 
you couldn't go at that height because you would just go into the trees. So we'll save the drone. I don't know if you can hear how puffed we are. We've got all that to go. Ah, oh. oh, it's all those lollies. <laughs> uh, a couple of wounded bulls after doing that. But we're soldiering on, we're going to Alley Lookout. It's only 250 metres apparently to the lookout, so see how we go. Alright, we're about 40 minutes out from the Flinders Ranges. We just passed through a town called Corn. They have a silo there as well, except it's a nighttime silo that they do a light show through, which is pretty cool. So we might be able to check that out before we leave. Um, we've also seen, well I've seen, four emus along the fence line, which I wasn't quick enough to get out my camera or anything to show you. They were quite cute, just all standing um, in a line along the fence. And then Kev spotted a wedgie, probably like, I reckon, 20, 20 to 30 metres out from the car. And then we did a loop to come back around and take a photo of him, but he flew off in the air. So I got a few photos of him in the air, but not down on the ground. You just forget how big they are. Um, but luckily out here, there's that many of them and that many emus around that I don't think there'll be a shortage of opportunities to take photos. Do you care? Yeah, I fucking love this place. It's awesome. You can also, when it decides to focus, just see the ranges in the background there. So they're all the way along. You got 360 there. views everywhere. I I just love this place. It's just rock. There's sheep everywhere. There's wedge tails big enough to pick up a sheep. There's massive kangaroos. There's, the gum trees are just huge here. Like trunks as wide as my car. No shit. It's. I love it. It's just great. All right, we just pulled up at Hawker. Hawker. <laughs> so we've just stopped to um, get a picture with the sign. This is the main part of South Australia's Flinders Ranges, or the main town, before you get into the Flinders Ranges. So, had to stop for a picture before we continue up into the ranges. Okie dokie. We just went to the information centre and um, got a sticker for the fridge. Um, but they were really useful and full of information, funnily enough, because we thought we would have to get a pass for the National Park, obviously, because... Um, Flinders Ranges else, is in a yeah. national park and everywhere else in South Australia have to and it's $13 a day but it says from 6am to 11pm so then we were like well what happens if you stay there overnight and like whatever so we thought we were going to be up for like you know $12 I mean $13 a day or whatever $39 three days whatever but the lady in there said you actually don't so she gave us this map um, which shows like all the areas you can go and you only need a pass if you're going into this like square box so everywhere else you can travel, it's only if you go into that square box that you need to have a pass. So if we happen to go into that square box for like a day or um, camp there or do a hike, at least we only have to pay the $13 once, which is really useful. Yeah, so I think we're ready to go. Heaps of other stuff on the back too. Yeah. I'm ready to go? You excited? Oh, I'm over the moon. Yeah, you look it and sound it. <laughs> oh, I am. Let's go on. I love fucking Flinders Ranges. It's awesome. All right, let's go. What the hell? There's like these little tornadoes everywhere. I don't know if you can see that. It's just there. Hopefully it picks up on here. But they're like dust tornadoes and they're everywhere out here. It's so cool. All right, we have made it into the Flinders Ranges National Park and the views out here are just to die for. Really, this isn't even one of the best spots and it's still pretty great. Even just the view behind Kev's car. So good. I'll try and zoom in there so you can see all the pretty colours. I see red, I see red, I see red. Check this out. Unreal. Hopefully that picks it up. It's just insane. We're about to head to the Arkaroo Rock Campground just to have some lunch um, and then we'll do a bit of exploring, I guess. We only filled up this morning and we've already used a third of the tank, so hopefully not too much more fuel today. I'm gonna pass this to Kev. Check it out. Kev's found this Big G's chili extra jerky. <laughs> He's been munging on. It's really good. It's just hot as, but it's still really nice to eat. Eat it all? Yeah. How's your mouth feel? Oh, it's tingling, but it's, it's alright. You get used to it. As if you keep eating it. 
it gets really hot. <laughs> you sure you're right? Yeah, I'm fine. Take your glasses off. Why? Do you eyes watered? I'm not stoned. <laughs> That's bad chilly. So we're just at the Arkaroo Rock and had lunch and we thought we may as well do it because we're here. So I've just put my runners on. What a look. I think I'm gonna take my skirt off because I've got shorts underneath. It's uh, not a good look with the skirt on. Uh, here we go. I suppose we've done it before. We'll do it again. It's somewhat worth it because the views are freaking amazing on the way. And there are. Oh. I'm dying. <laughs> I'm tired of this, Grandpa. Uh, actually, not really that bad. <laughs> Last time it was 40 degrees we did this. I feel like deep creek is worse. Yeah. Alright, you can go a better way. It's a bit more flat, but just for old times sakes, we're going to go up the rocks. This way looks better. It's cool. Yeah, it is really nice. Oh, look at the rocks. They're so cool. Like... That's a big stretch. So pretty. Literally unreal. All right, we're about to come up to an opening and hopefully it's got some good views for us. Wow, look at that. Yeah, pretty, cool. pretty cool little view here too. The sun's sort of coming towards our forehead so it's not really in the best spot for um, videos and photos and all that sorts of media stuff but that's right, hopefully you can still see. There he is. He does look like a little baby from it. Here she comes. It's obviously fenced off. We're on our way back down. We got a little sidetracked and met up with a lovely elderly couple at the top and I got stuck chatting to them for probably a good 20 minutes and they were telling me all about the top end because they're from WA um, and telling me not to go near the waters of Northern Territory. So I'll just add another one to the list of people that tell me to stay away from the waters up there. Told ya. <laughs> but yeah, so we're on our way down now. And the weather's, well, it's cooled down a little bit and there's a bit of a breeze happening now, but going down's a lot easier because coming up's pretty much all uphill. So leaves a nice, easy, breezy downhill for the way home. They were, mind you, they were, I reckon, about 70 years old, about, about that age. And yeah. they were doing this same hike, so. Yep, that's right. Well, Get off your ass. <laughs> <sighs> Just found this giant big boulder. I'm going to try to push it. Good luck. <laughs> huh? <laughs> like most of these tracks, there's always one way in and then normally one way out that's different. This way's got a cool little walkway, a little bridge. Must get a fair bit of water flow at some stage. Jeez, it doesn't feel that great. It feels like it's about to snap. We were just walking along and there was some wallabies that were hopping along so we're going to see if we can find them. You might have only just caught that on video. He's just in there hiding. Hello buddy. So cool. We did it. We're back in the car park. It says two hours return and three kilometers, but to be honest, I reckon that probably took us about an hour and we had a 20 minute chat. So I reckon you could probably do it in 40 minutes or so. And we are not the fittest people out. We're not really unfit, but we're not fit fit. So if this is something you do all the time, you could probably easily have that done within 20 to 30 minutes. Guys, I'm so sad. I just got a tan and now I'm losing it. <sighs> I literally, it takes me forever to tan and only like the slightest amount and it's going. Sad. What's up? We just pulled up at the 
What is it? Kaznox. Yeah. Saznox or Kaznox tree. It's a very big gum tree that was uh, been here for ages and some photographers have taken some famous photos of it. So we'll go climb. Oh, I think last time we had to climb across. I can't uh, remember. Remember there was a tree down we climbed yeah, across? but Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, I'll show you in a minute. Coming back to me now, I remember it. Last time we had to cross a fallen tree over here because this bridge was busted and blocked off. But they've obviously uh, fixed the bridge and cleared up that big tree that was down there. So that is her in all of her former glory. It is such a unique photograph back in its day due to the hills in the background. A bit of information on it here. Again, I'm not going to read it. Pause it if you want to read it. There's so many of these gates out here that farmers obviously keep shut so that their stock don't escape and you have to open them to get where you want to go. So we are going to Stokes Lookout at the moment, which is a gorgeous spot up on, well, I reckon it's one of the highest points of the Flinders Ranges to be honest. Um, I'm going to fly the drone up so you guys can see the footage, but it's literally just like vast landscape with red dirt and shrubs and dead trees everywhere but the views are to die for yo yo, yo. we made it never disappoints it's hard to see with the sun when it's facing you but the 360 views around this joint well today was great finally arrived at flinders ranges did all the well most of the Things we wanted to see like the tree and the um, Stokes lookout we watched the sunset flew the drone got some good footage seen some eagles seen some roots seen some emus we ended up coming to Willow Springs um, campground well, it's like a station actually it's run by some people and you know we paid the fee to stay the night and um, they offered us $28 for firewood and they'll drop it off at our campsite so off to the um, lookout we went watched the sunset thought we'd cook dinner up there but it was a bit too windy and getting cold as the sun went down so we come back here um, Holly was just going to start on dinner and I was going to start the fire and there's no fucking firewood anywhere I don't know whether some grub stole it or they've just forgotten about us but that sort of ruined our night because we were looking forward to just sitting in the camp chairs and in front of the fire for the first time in a while looking at the stars in the ranges but I think it sucks too because I don't know if you can see me because of my head torch but it sucks because when we pulled in there was other people having campfires so it just sort of rubbed it in a bit and we haven't had one it was like a little luxury we're looking forward to and yeah. we even got the campfire right in front of us but no wood and obviously not allowed to cut any wood so it might just be 30 bucks to other people but to us when you pay for a campsite and we're trying to do it as cheap as we can it's yeah a little bit of a a little bit of a shit. Way oh, to end I'll the be night. getting my money back. I'll be getting my money back. <laughs>